Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to introduce you a new tool, a new tool that we have been using a lot and we're working with the developers. So it's, it is a tool to real-time collaboration to develop your own workflows using uh, uh, Fluid Dynamics Solver, CFD Solvers, but it's not only limited to CFD Solvers, it's basically any application that can be parameterized, we can put it here and we can set up very complex workflows. But in this frame that we're working with OpenFund, we're going to show you how to use this tool using OpenFund, okay? It's a very efficient tool, okay? So you can come here to the website, you can log in, create your account and start to use it. So I will introduce you a little bit to the tool, okay? The features that we have and have in mind that this application is growing, it is growing continuously and we want your, your, your feedback. So basically, when you log in and you create your, 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 <clears throat> your own space, you're going to get to this page when you log. Okay, so this is my case. And this is like any other tool if you have used web-based tools, real-time collaboration. So you can create projects and move up between projects and so on. So in this case, what we're going to do is a simulation of a very well-known geometry, the AMET body. So just to show you here, we have the geometry in on shape. And just to point out that what we're doing here with Dicel is something equivalent to on shape, but it's on shape is focusing to the CAT modeling. Here we're focusing into integrating everything okay from cat to running the simulation to running in the cloud to doing post-processing with open phone but not only open phone remember it can be a, it can be any other application okay it does not need to be all the cfd can be whatever you want that can be integrated in this real-time co collaboration tool so basically this is the geometry that we're going to do so I'm going to do this setup quite fast, okay? Just to show you how easy it is to use it. So we have the geometry, we have our domain, okay? So I already downloaded the geometry in STL. So remember, it follows the same workflow as an open form. We are not reinventing open form. We are making it easier to use, but also we're going to put a little bit of our knowledge to help you to set up efficient cases, just to give you raw numerics and extra tools that we're using. So here I have the geometry, I have my standard STL. So for this case, I'm going to read only the AMET body later in more advanced setups. I'm going to show you how to create you know, the refinement zone and so on. So this is what we're going to do. So when you go here and you are in your application, over here, you need to create a new project. So get familiar with the application. So see that we have a community, templates and so on. And not going into details, but you have auctions set up. I want to create, create a new project. So see that I have a few projects that you can revisit and so on. So you click here, new project, give it a name. And everything is cloud-based, so it's stored somewhere in the cloud. Okay, so, so far we have it they deploy the tool cloud-based, but there is the option just to get the Docker container and you can run everything locally. So for that, you need to talk with the developers. So I see that we have this basic application. So we have the basic meshing tool, a snappy X mesh. We have the basic incompressible state, a steady state incompressible transient. And then we have the general open phone case form. So basically here you can do anything. So this will be the most flexible one, but it's a little bit tricky in the sense that you need to create dictionaries later. We're going to prepare more videos, but let's work with this straightforward workflow. So we're going to create geometry and then run the simulation steady state. And just to, <clears throat> to use the zone to the tab. So see here that you have activities, what you have done. Is there are members in your project? You can share this. So for instance, let me look here. I can share whatever I'm doing with this me member, you add it there. And now this person can also work in the same project real time. You can make the project public. You can give in also editor rights and so on. Okay. So later we prepare, we're going to prepare more videos just to show you that. Okay. Many people working in the same document at the same time. For the moment, it's just me working in that one. So let's create the first application, which is the meshing tool. Okay, and later also we're going to give you access to more advanced tools. So basically you have this graphical interface. Okay, so in this graphical interface, okay, is very straightforward. You have seen, use uh, part of it, it's pretty much the same. So here you have 
what we have you can you have the eyeball here you can hide sims and so on you can change colors here you have your vertical workflow so i will focus on this to set up cases let's use this vertical workflow there are more options to do scenes so for instance you can access here configurations parametrical cases versions if you have so you are familiar with versioning this is what we can do one single case many many configurations and the idea here is to do optimization design space exploration and so on so everything is ready to use the storage the files that you have there and then this is probably uh, the kernel of everything these are the parametrical files how cases are parameterized and these are the options that we're giving you but you can change anything so for the moment we're going just to focus here main steps here you have also this ribbon where you have uh, no, to change options for visualization just to point out here here you can go back to your uh, space so you can check and open new cases so i'm going back to this one and see that your application is already here so you can enter again and probably you realize that there is no safe there is no need to save everything is safe uh automatically okay so in theory you have infinite undoes everything is saved okay so do not worry about that everything you click is being safe then here you have some other options okay so you can change settings more advanced options so later we go into details about that but feel free to play a little bit around many things are, are very intuitive here you have the project with a default name so you will see this is strange names but if you want to change names here you have rename the title you can switch to another you can delete this app you have some settings also uh, regarding all the canvas and the colors welcome screen and so on so here you have the users working in the application so right now it's just me but if you have many users you're going to see here different icons and then you can chat with different users here you have chat windows okay and you can give control to the other users you can be working for instance in the background mesh and then the other in the surface refinement and so on so later we're going to see that so that being said that we get familiar here with the with our canvas okay the first thing is just to upload the geometry okay so let me load the ge geometry so it's a stl files uh please use sts do not use abg so so far the abg can give you problems so get the stl it can be ask your binary so i will get my stl here just put it there you can load multiple stls by the way so in this case it's just a single so see that the classical amet body and see that now you start to see that here since start to get uh you start to get the names of the files and so so see that you have your amet body okay and you can hide the geometry so on and you have a, a block mesh but that is built automatically around that uh see that the name is this is the name of the file and then this corresponds to the internal name in your stl files just to remind you that this stl files and something why i recommend you to use uh ASCII files because you can open and modify those ASCII files. So let me go here and it's exactly this name. Okay. So you can change that. Okay. If you want, but I don't not going to do it, but you are reading that exactly. So see that now you are, we're getting the structure and let's move to the next step. So remember, have in mind that our, our workflow is vertical from top to down to bottom, even in the simulation that later we're going to see. So now I go to background mesh and basically you need to construct your background mesh. So this is very cool here. So see that you can click in a face and just control here. You just give the dimensions and you create your background mesh. Okay. So you can do like this, or you can get different options there calculate automatically that fix to that box for instance you, you will if you want to use internal flow this is what you would like to do so it's up to you in this case let's go okay and let me give dimensions that kind of already you know that we'll put here minus two let me put this minus two this uh zero this one will be here let me put five this one let me put two and this one let me put two okay so see that we have our box okay i gave the dimensions there but is the one again just just drag drag there there's no problem so to create this one remember it follows same similar rules that you have in, in the application that you are using in this case open phone so it goes to minimum to maximum coordinates okay 
be careful about that. And then also you can define here number of cells that you want in each direction, or you can give the cell size and it will compute everything. So I will go like this in every direction, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1. So later also we're going to do some of the videos just to revisit the theory be behind a snappy X mesh to see how these meshes are related and how we can get an idea of the cell size. But remember that everything is in function to this. So we have this cell size, okay, and then uh, the uh, the surface refinements is done in reference to 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 this dimension or the cell size that you have there. Okay, so remember always that. Okay, so now that we have this, let's move to the next step. Okay, so see that also here you have the boundaries. So if you want, you can change the names. Okay, of the boundaries. Okay, so for this moment, I will leave it there. Okay, I will leave the names like that. Then you have the material point. So recall that in Snappy, uh, you need to define this point. By the way, also, when sometimes you select something and if you want to exit this selection, just click anywhere in the canvas and see that it's gone, that selection. Okay, so basically, let me select that point, okay? So zoom in. So you can click there, you can put it there, you can give the coordinates, and then also we have this automatic tool that is going to put it somewhere there. Okay, so this tool it might happen that in this case it worked fine, but sometimes probably might add this point inside the geometry, but remember you can move that. So looking at here at this, I see that probably my domain is a little bit small. So let me go back to background mesh and I go into the X minimum and let me put minus three. Okay, this is, looks much better. So see that's quite easy to set up sense here. So and later we're going to visit some other options that you see there. Okay, so now here we go to edge refinement. Very important step. So remember that when you have chart angles, you need to capture that in a snappy to, to, to make your mesh body fit it. So let me hide here the mesh. So see background mesh, eyeball. I don't want to see anymore. I just have my geometry. So here we are accessing two features that you have in a snappy. So this here you can add edge refinement using the internal feature that you have in the snappy X mesh. Okay, I know I don't want to go into details that about that. So let me re remove that one. So see that is you add that you have here L0 it means level zero. Okay, you are adding that. So when you remove, you don't see anything there means that you are not adding features. I want to do things visually, okay, like using surface feature extract. So to do that, you need to select your geometry here and see here that you have this pencil, kind of a pencil there, extract features and see that here you access options and let me press apply and see that you have the colors there or that and then these are the features that you are extracting with that angle. And what is cool about here that you can click with the mouse and you can select what you want to use to do the, the surface features. Very handy tool. So you can do it with part of you. Okay, but here we are adding that. Okay, and later probably we, we will do, use more features to, to also do selection. Okay, so I want to add just this segment here and so on. Okay, so see that we capture here and for instance, see that we didn't capture this chart angle here. So we want to rerun this one to capture those features. So see that I click here in the master feature and you can update that. So I, let me go 150. So let's see what happened here. Apply. I know capturing that 160 apply. And there you go. This is what we want. So I want to capture all these features and I want to resolve everything. So see that automatically will create a name for everything or you can capture individuals one. So you can be selective at the time of doing this. So just to show you, I can go select this one. See that you have it there and let me select this one and see that you have it there also. And then you click here and you add the, ref the refinement level if you want to do so. If you put it the refinement level zero, it means that you are forcing to resolve that. Okay, so let me erase there, and I will add everything. So all the features, all the selections is this master one, okay? Or you can click here also and do the same stuff, okay? So it's very handy. So I will do everything here, save, and now I'm forcing everything, see that you have L0 there, forcing everything just to, to snap there, to be body fitted, okay? And if you want to remove, you have it there. Our next step now is the surface refinement. So you have a surface 
in this case we have a single body if we had many bodies you will see everything you can do it later more complex cases are we're going to see how to do that so again as you click here see that you can choose minimum and maximum and recall all this curvature stuff so for this case i will go and we'll put here two okay and you can have the second larger and so on also you have here now you can click here to increase and so on very handy so i will put two here i will do something small i don't want to fire uh to spin a large case so we have it here and just to remind you that let me show you again the boom boom boom, boom the background mesh so I go here see that recall that all the refinement everything is done in reference to this so if i choose a refinement level of two this cell next to the body is going to split to be split into smaller uh faces okay so faces or cells so now let's move to the other case so i will leave that stuff there volume refinement is you have volume so remember that we mentioned this volume box that you see there for the moment i'm not going to add it but it's quite simple so for instance let me add a geometrical box and see that you have the box there and let me hide this one and yeah for our purpose, let's do it let's add this box and see that it's pretty much the same just push in, push out, you can also import geometry, so more advanced board flows, we're going to see how to do that. So let's add, add this refinement here. Okay, it's a little bit high there, let me put it here. And there you go, I'm happy with that. Let me look at my background mesh, and this is what we're doing. Okay, and as you want to add another one, you put it there, and I want to put a refinement level of one on this one, okay? So you have the options here, the box, you can give manually coordinates or push push pull everything in, the, in your GUI put your level here and see that you have it there means that it has been applied then we go to the boundary layers and again here just select I want to add boundary layers here so this name that you see here is coming from the STL so if you want to have different names just change it in the STL or later we're going to give you the option just to modify that also here for the moment it cannot be done or it can be done but it's a little bit more complex we need to go into to show you some other options but in the gui you have access so far so see that we add layers and you have default options so we recommend you to use these default options remember that we're going to give you our best setup to set up cases so things are going to work fine okay and then that we're happy with the cell zones is you have cell zones on the stuff for instance you are going to do mrf simulations and remember that you need to select a zone you need to create that you do it here okay there is no problem okay and here also you can load those stls to apply you know that refinement create those cell zones so so in other cases, we're going to see how to do that. And at this point, we're ready to, to go. So see that it's very straightforward, vertical, no workflow. And here you can choose your machines. So see that we are giving access, we're accessing everything. There are two cloud centers. We have Amazon and another one in Germany. Okay, so it's up to you. So this is a, a small case. So I will stick with this machine now because it spins really fast. So we're going to use one core or probably this one. Okay, it still is a fast machine that is going to spin now that, that server very fast. And at this point, what I need to do is run simulation and everything is done in the background. It's going to go to the cloud and we need to wait. So see that now it is launching everything, getting the servers, launching the virtual machine, you know, the dockers, containers, and so on. So see here that you access summary, you have your logs here, all the log files, all the steps, everything, but what is happening, you have it here. And then you have this very handy Jupyter notebooks and so on, Jupyter lab. So later we're going to talk about that, but here you have everything. So see all the, your steps are in here. And it's, if something fails, you're going to get a message there that it failed. Then you can troubleshoot. So we are going to show you that, how to look at the files, what is happening. But this is like if you were ru running in your local computer. So see that all the steps, everything you have here, save it. So see that meshing, we have this. It's not so good, no, the boundary layer mesh, but it does not matter just to show you surface features, background mesh, and so on. Okay, so reconstructed, we run in parallel. So by default, it's running now with the maximum number of cores that we have available. And we're done, okay? So see that warning? So you can click there and see that we have some issues with excuse it, but it's not a, it's not a, 
it's not a problem. Let's go and see what is the next step. Okay, so now that we have the mesh, you can click here, show results, okay? So you can visualize your mesh, okay? And this is our mesh, okay? So you have your background mesh. See that there is some transparency, but you can also hide things here. And let me go and choose here. This is remember the name that later I'm going to show you where to change it, okay? So see that it was a rather quartz mesh, but it's okay for to show you, but see that we managed to capture all the charge angles. Then you click here and see that you have this option that you can create and slicer, like using part of you. Apply, you have it there. You select your slicer, go here. Okay, um, for instance, I don't like that color. See that you have there this option and you can choose a different color. And there you go, I use that one. And this is what we have, okay? And you have just to all these options that equivalent out to what we have in part of, you know, slicer, we have the clip filter, we have contours later in the solution, string lines, this is to, to extract features, okay, visibility to hide. Here you have the camera, so you have different, you want different orientation, so let me put this one, okay. So just feel free to play with the options and this is to measure, okay? So basic also in part of it is not very hand, it's not super useful, but well, you have there all the tools, you have the scale bars and so on. Okay, so we're happy with this. Okay, let me see from back, you can select everything. Let me put the inlet and let me put the lower wall, let me hide this. And this is what we have. Okay, quite decent mesh. We have the refinement there. If you want to put different refinements and so on. So, okay, our next step is to move to the uh, to the actual application. So see that we have the mesh, and now we can move to creating the application. So just to show you, you know this collaboration stuff. So see that on how it's working. So we have an application. See that this is a mesh, and we have here you know a finished task. So here you have a summary how many tasks you are running and so on. So later we're going to to talk about that. So let me re-enter here, double click. So remember everything is safe automatically. Here you have information about the running time, the cases you have run and so on. Okay, so you can keep an eye on, on your budget. But for us now, in these options also, you can download everything locally so you can see the dictionaries how we have been created and so on. Okay, but for us, we want to go to the next step. Before that, also you have here the statistics. If you are curious, so you have more information there. Okay, so feel beautiful statistic, and you have it here, and so on. Our next step is here: choose next template. So remember that we have this template. So first one is meshing. The next template will be running the simulation. So here we have available this one, and we're going to focus in a steady state incompressible. Okay, we have also the transient and later on we're going to add more com uh, more complex uh, templates like for instance a lot of people is interested in naval simulation and it can be tricky to set up or a straightforward overset mesh setups and so on so let me click here and see that it's going to transfer everything to a new template okay and now we can set up the case so see that we have the mesh all the names here see that nice colors there and Again, same vertical workflow to set up everything. So you have the same options here, collaboration, so on. And just to show you again, you can get out of here, go to your <coughs> to the user area and see that you have mesh and here you have this one, not the one that we're working. You can click again and enter. So everything is safe automatically, okay? So here you have options to import new meshes and so on. So this might become handy when doing oversets or some specific techniques to do some meshing. But here you go. So mesh, it has been imported, okay? Materials, you choose the materials. Here we have a very short database, but it can be you know, extended with no problem or you can change values manually, there is no problem. Okay, so let's just select material, Okay, then we move to the next one, turbulence model. It's up to you. So we're giving access to, let's say, the most reliable turbulence models. Remember that in OpenFund, you have many of them. Okay, but let's say these are the most used. So for me, it's a particular show, a personal choice. I like the K Omega 2006. So one, you have some access to some coefficients. And now you set up here boundary conditions, okay? 
game where giving you access here to the most important boundary conditions okay and actually later also we're going to create better routes templates so you need to get lost into all the boundary conditions available in open funds you might, might know that there are many of them so here we have the option just to select everything and also to rename the patches so recall this mesh one here you click here in the pencil and let me call it Ahmed. that is the body there then you have this this these are okay so these names are okay okay so lo lower wall let me say that this will be this will be ground um that's all and now you can add the actual numerical so value so we change the names okay so you can select also like types and so on so now let's change here so the inlet will be a patch where i'm going to set for pressure let's say that i want to select, select the zero gradient and then for the velocity i want there let's put a free stream value there so i want 10 okay here so see that we're giving access to the most important ones uh numerical uh, uh, boundary condition type okay but there are many of them but these are the most important ones so we have patch zero gradient talking about the uh, so zero gradient here also you can use the uh surface normal value okay so it's normal as you have those surfaces oriented in strange directions but remember that it has to be negative if entering the domain so for our purposes let me put this one minus uh, 10 okay so then we have the turbulence model that you need to give the boundary conditions okay so here we have also a very nice tool you click here in the list is here and you have this option open turbulence calculator very handy so it is using all the values that you define here you can click here compute and it will get an estimate estimate using the standard equations now for turbulence modeling in any book you have that in any case also we're going to worry more tutorials to show that but it's a st standard relations okay so if you are happy with this apply and see you go there we apply though so if you want to use different values also you can change this option manually so see that many things are computed for you automatically okay so let's apply these values and happy and okay so we have turbulence kinetic energy okay we put everything we leave it like this then we set it okay this one is calculated we don't have it here okay ba -ba 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 -ba. let me go now to outlet Okay, so in outlet, let's fix the pressure in the outlet. Let's go in the outlet for velocity in the case. Now, you know that this is zero gradient as you have flow coming back into the domain is adjusted accordingly. And we compute here. Now we go and we put this 10 like compute and apply. Well, we already have the previous one. And see that we apply automatically the values there. Okay, so we have patch okay so this one's here let's say that it is inlet outlet inlet outlet okay so this is to avoid remember the problem with backflows uh calculated so noon is computed for k and omega okay so you have then let me go here also omega noon is calculated the rest is defined and then you have the amet so see that here you have the kqr omega everything is set up all right for these ones let's change the type and let me put this one symmetry so also we need to add this lip boundary condition there by the way you can do also multiple selections here so you can select with control or shift that stuff and let's put everything there symmetry which is a wall with no boundary layer equivalent to that okay so let's say that i have okay so here i have my standard wall i have my symmetry there from they have the ground i don't like that name go there i have the outlet okay inlet okay upper ball so see that define everything very straightforward then initialization you can use choose your initialization so we recommend to use you now probably your familiar potential phone usually it works only in compressive but let's do here and let's initialize not using standard values now from the inlet and see that 
a uniform value. I will use the information that I set up in the inlet okay, to initialize everything. So you define everything, we check everything is okay. Now solver settings, okay? So this is the steady simple phone. So we're giving you these default options. Okay, so we have all the tolerances and everything, the residual control and, and, and so on, okay? So this is residual control, initial residual in a steady solver. So we're defining here a rather high value, but you can change it, okay? Consistent system, you have a auction, uh, access to many auctions. So we're giving here the most robust auction. So saying numerics, so here see that you access many auctions. For our case, we're using this standard numerics that is a good one. Then move here and add monitor so see that we're almost done and you are you just add monitor so here we're giving you access to this one but it can be extended or for the videos more advanced we're going to show you how to create your own monitor so for this case let me create a force monitor it will <coughs> apply that you select the patch okay enable and that is okay for moments, you give your center of rotation. Then let me apply also, for instance, Y plus, save that value, okay, enable. Let me apply a maximum value for Y plus, okay, or not maximum, average value. Okay, so see I created, you can erase it, but let me put, uh, okay, okay, it's not enabled there, okay, so. Okay, half my default values. Okay, let me add, for instance, mass flow. Okay, and I want the mass flow in the inlet. Okay, and let me add another mass flow, and I want that in the outlet. So I'm checking mass conservation. So see, I put a Y plus in the outlet forces, and that's okay for the moment. And then run like we did previously with mesh. Change machines here, so let me go this one. So feel free, you can play. We have GPUs and so on, okay? And then see that run controls. We're going to run 100 iterations quite fast and this right interval, let me put it here, 50. Uh, one thing also, you click here, run, and later we're going to see that, but while it's running, you can change auction. So all these dictionaries that you set up here can be modified manually. We have here all these controls, the storage, where you can change that auctions. And then you can click here, update, and it will update it automatically. You know? like, like if you were running in your computer. So this is that is a little bit more advanced, okay? So see that everything is starting, renumbering mesh, decomposing. You can check everything running, okay? Here, check mesh, okay? And see that now it is running. Showing your monitors, so we're using here Plotly, so this is very interactive, you can hide. So. Or if you have your own Plotly script, it can be, you can also add your scripts here. You have your forces, every single monitor, so see that Y plus you have minimum, maximum, and average value. Okay, the one I will set in. So the Y plus, the let's say the average value is something about 200. It's acceptable, but the maximum is, is too large. Okay, and you have your mass flow there. So remember it's conservative. So what is going in is going out and everything seems to be working fine. And here we reach the time, okay. And now that we reach now the last iteration 100, Later, we're going to talk about this, the, the Jupyter lab that is very handy. So we have everything. We are ready to see the results, okay? So now we can click, you can download results and you can post process or look at everything locally. Okay, let me show you clicking and see that you have your case, uh, all the setup with the solution, by the way. Or you can click show results and you do your post processing here. A standard as in part of you, okay? It's a little bit different our GUI, but it's just based in VTKs and stuff. Okay, so here you can go back, you can advance, no, your your iterations will be will be iterations in this, this case, okay. And then also create planes, high surfaces and so. So let me go Amit Body. Okay, click here, see if it's fit to screen, and let's say that I want to see their pressure in that surface. And you have pressure there. Let me you now go here, internal mesh, you know, you I want to apply a filter and I want to create a slice there so i want here and i want to see in that velocity and see that you have it there okay you can change orientation you have the camera okay somewhere there and okay here you have the camera 
the orientation. Uh, now, for instance, you have the slice and let me, for instance, go and I want to create an internal mesh. These are isosurfacers uh, here, control filter. So I want to create an isosurface of pressure and let me choose a value of 10, for instance. And there you go. That, let me put two, probably we'll see better. There you go. I want to hide this one here. And you can change the colors by selecting. So very, pretty much like you do for a standard power view, okay? And very cool, very handy. Also, for instance, we have also streamlines. So click there. Um, you can release for a line or a point sit here. So let me release this one, probably the easiest one. So you can move it with the mouse also. You can change the diameter of that there. So we have radius here is, let me put 0, 0 0.2. See that you have it there. And we want to release a string lines now for here. You can choose like 50 string lines. And as you press apply, Okay, you need to select here. Okay, so uh, uh, point set. Okay, total thickness, so radius, number of points, total two thickness. Let me go 0 0.01. Okay, point. Okay, let me go. Let me raise it like a little bit. Probably did something wrong. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so internal mesh, you click there. I want to apply the string lines there. And let me apply there. Okay, see that you have it there. So I was doing something wrong. Let me change now the um, radius. And let me put 0, 1, to small, 0, 2. So as you click again, apply. There you go. And let me put a string lines there. It's okay, instead of I put this and you can color like usual way. Okay, put it there. So see that very handy, very easy. So, but just to stress, this is basic post-processing now. So we were giving access to you for basic stuff. So you want to do more advanced things, just download the case uh, locally and do your standard post-processing, okay? So yes, this is how you use DiceHot to set up simulations using open phones. Uh, remember that it can be any application, okay? So we just need to create the parameterization. So at this point, I think I'm done with this tutorial, okay? Very basic, recall that we're going to do more advancing. So at this point, let me go exit here. Remember that everything has been saved automatically. So everything I did, it is in here. And if you want to erase this project because you have also your home here where you have all your projects and you don't like that one, you want to erase that for any reason, you can erase the whole project. So here you have settings. Okay, and here you have delete project, C1. And as I say, you have many options. So see here that I run these simulations, how many cores, so you can keep an eye in your simulation, how many people invited. So I have this user invited that he can enter and also modify at the same time or at different times the same case. Uh, I have this too, but if I want to create another app, just create application, add new geometry, and things can be linked. So yes, that is all for this basic tutorial. Okay, stay, stay tuned because we're going to show you more tutorials to show you that it's very hard, very easy to set up cases with open phone, or if you would like to send the use of DiHot to different applications, we're open for that. So thank you for your attention and see you next time. Bye.